While we are all hopefully comfortable with the simple DC circuits from AP Physics 1, what happens when we introduce capacitors or inductors into circuits? Before diving into the basics of RC and RL circuits, let's first quickly review the basics of circuit components. First, because the current was defined as the rate of change of charge, it will now be defined as the derivative of charge with respect to time. In addition, for resistors in series, their resistances add up. For parallel arrangements, it follows the sum of the reciprocal pattern. However, capacitors are the quote-unquote reverse of resistors. In parallel, their capacitances add up, and in series, they follow the reciprocal sum pattern. With this rapid review out of the way, let's take our first look at the simplest form of the RC circuit, or circuits with resistors and capacitors. Now, while there can be multiple variations of this circuit, such as parallel or combination arrangements, the process for solving the different quantities in RC circuits will always be the same. For example, let's take a look at the circuit the instant the switch is closed, or what's known as a charging capacitor RC circuit situation. In this case, we can use Kirchhoff's loop rule, remembering that the voltage across a resistor is current times resistance, and through a capacitor is the charge divided by the capacitance. Using our new derivative definition of current, what we're left with is actually a fairly simple differential equation. Solving with the integration constant being a consequence of the fact that, at time equals zero, the capacitor should have a charge of zero as well, we can arrive at an equation for the charge on the capacitor, where the quantity RC, or resistance times capacitance, is usually noted as the Greek letter tau, or time constant. Now, the graph of this equation looks something like this, and this graph should make intuitive sense. At time equals zero, our capacitor begins to charge up, slowly but asymptotically approaching a charge that opposes the battery's voltage. In addition, we can use this charge equation to find other quantities as well. For example, taking the derivative of this charge with respect to time, we can find the current equation for this RC circuit. Or, using the relationship Q equals CV for capacitor, we can find an equation for the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time as well. Now, these graphs technically only apply to this one specific type of RC circuit. In other cases, such as when the capacitor starts charged and discharges across a resistor, or there are parallel or combination arrangements, use the exact same process of solving this differential equation from Kirchhoff's loop rule to find the related equations of the specific circuit you're dealing with. A near identical process can be applied to RL circuits, or circuits with resistors and inductors. Looking at a situation where the charge slowly begins to increase, analogous to the charging of a capacitor in an RC circuit, we can once again use Kirchhoff's loop rule. Remembering that the potential difference across an inductor is the negative of the inductance times the rate of change of current, we can see that, like before, we have a differential equation with current instead of charge this time. Solving this equation using the fact that at time zero, the current should obviously start at zero as well, we can arrive at an equation for the current across the circuit as a function of time. In this case, our new time constant tau for RL circuits is the quantity inductance divided by resistance. Looking at the graph of this equation, we can immediately see some properties we discussed in our inductors video. While the current is first heavily opposed, after a long time, the inductor lets all of the current through, acting just like any old piece of wire. In addition, applying the voltage across an inductor's definition, we can also arrive at another equation for that as well. While RC and RL circuits have countless combinations and arrangements, the process of writing Kirchhoff's loop rule and applying background knowledge is all that's needed to arrive at the related equations and graphs. While there also exist LC and RLC circuits with new quantities like impedance, those will be the topic of a future video. For now, you can feel good that you've just finished learning about RC and RL circuits. 